<gasps> Hi friends! We're taking a look at the new Sony G Fusion series, but first, if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. I'm looking at my highlight. I have to apply a little more elevated glow. I'm gonna do that. And I will blend that out with the mini base. So as I blend this elevated glow out from Lisa Eldridge, hi Lisa, we will go over the Fusion series from Sonya G. I already have a live video breaking into the set for the first time online because Beautylish, thank you so much. This is PR. So it was sent to me. I did not pay for these brushes. They did not ask me to do this review. But historically, anything, whether I buy from Sonya G or receive as PR from Sonia, I most likely will do a video on it. That's just how I roll. And with that said, timestamps will be down below and each timestamp will be dedicated to a brush. If you just want to see jumbo base, if you just want to see soft concealer. And in addition to the B roll that I will have with said brush, I will also provide the comparisons that I think relative. So just to make it a little easier for me to edit, because it's going to be a lot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's better. I use these brushes over the weekend and today I also put them to the test with different products that I did not use. And man, oh man, this is perhaps, well, you know what? Mm, I don't know if it's my favorite, favorite, favorite out of all of Sonya G's releases because all her brushes are exquisitely designed. If you don't know who Sonya G is, Sonya is a Fude brush connoisseur, okay? She has every, well, maybe not, but I feel like she does, every Japanese made brush in her collection. And a few years back, she decided to start her own brush line. It is exclusively sold on Beautylish and she first started with her fundamental set, then she followed with her pro face set, pro eye set, sky face set, sky eye set, her Kiyaki travel set, which included the beautifully crafted mini base. The moment I used this brush for the first time, I said, I was like, Sonia needs to make a full size version of the mini base. Not only did she do that, she made a whole collection based off this brush blend. This was highly anticipated because the mini base was and still is a hit. And for Sonia to now dedicate a whole line called the Fusion Series, which is dropping tomorrow, Tuesday the 22nd, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. And the reason I'm being so dramatic about this is because the brush blend is just... If you want to know more about this collection, I will post her blog down below, sweetmakeuptemptations.com, as well as her Instagram, as she has dedicated Instagram posts for each brush and the whole collection. Pulling from one of the captions here, Sonia was looking for a material or mix that would be both effective and effortless, yet gentle on the skin and made in Japan. Hmm. Creating these brushes with the specific combination of three different materials. We got natural bristles, goat, PTT, and PBT synthetic filaments is what I found to be the most accurate to cover the functionality that I had in mind. <gasps> these brushes are actually for those of us who love to play and work with creams and liquids. To go over pricing, this set will retail for $225, but the brushes will be sold individually. That's great news because you don't have to buy the whole set if maybe you're just interested in one or two. Pricing for individual brushes range from $30 to $68. So I can only assume that the smaller brush being the soft concealer will retail for $30 and the biggest brush being the jumbo base will retail for $68. And the reason why these brushes are so, so, so expensive is one, this special mix. So you're going with natural and synthetic filaments. And again, these brush heads are hand bundled. They are not cut. And therefore, the level of craftsmanship that's required to create these brushes is why they are so expensive because they are not machine made. And naturally, any item that is handmade is going to be more expensive. The handles are the classic red black radiant that Sonia uses. And the design of the handle is also tapered like her Pro series. With that said, let's start with the first brush, the Jumbo Base. The Jumbo Base is the biggest of the series. It has a slanted shape to blend as it moves, offering a super quick application of foundation. I did not realize this in my live, but the Jumbo Base has a pronounced slant. It was hard to tell because I think 
since I just washed it, it didn't fluff out to its fullest potential. But after I used it a few times, you can definitely see that the bristles towards the front of the ferrule are shorter than the ones toward the back. Here, I used the jumbo base to apply the Huda Beauty Full Filter Stick Foundation. This is in the shade Butter Pecan. And I find because of the slanted design, it makes it seamlessly easy to apply and blend your foundation in that paddle-like fashion. But what's extraordinary is the softness of the brush. It does not feel prickly as some natural brushes do. I brought this up also in my live. The fact that it's in this unique mix lends this plush sensation to the skin. And because the brush is half natural, half synthetic, it's not going to take away so much product, but not leave behind an exorbitant amount. So I feel this mixture yield just like a really nice medium coverage. And of course, depending on the foundation that you use, will definitely determine the coverage in the end. But I like the fact that the brush is gonna leave behind just the right amount of coverage, but take away the right amount so the skin doesn't look overly made up or textured with makeup. Jumbo base for me is simply, it's simply to die for. I know I'm being so dramatic about it, but to have a brush like that, of that level of softness and the fact that it's half natural, half synthetic, you couldn't ask for a better brush. Now, I also use the Jumbo Base to apply a little bit of powder foundation. I use the Shiseido Synchro Skin Powder Foundation in shade Maple. I went in with Classic Base first, and I'll show you that footage in a minute, but I really like Jumbo Base to punch on a little more powder foundation on portions that I needed more coverage. And again, because of this brush blend, it just melts the powder into the skin. Not only powder, but creams and liquids. I don't know how this freaking brush does it and this is what i experienced with my little mini base no matter what i used it with with foundation concealer cream bronzer contour cream blush highlight whatever this trifecta of bristle it is so immaculate and you'll see the evidence going more into the video when i show more products Okay, so those are the tasks I like to rely on the Jumbo Base for. And many of you are wondering about the BK Beauty 101 and the Marc Jacobs Face Sculpt 2. So BK Beauty, you see, has a very pronounced slant, very short on the front and goes super long towards the back. And because of that, it has a much more pronounced splay when you place it in contact with your skin. The Marc Jacobs, not as of a pronounced slant, but similar in design design these are both synthetic so here they are side by side you see that the mark has a little more bristle i think but it still has that similar splay feel on the skin but when we put these up against sonia's brush i think this is what makes sonia's jumbo base so unique Actually, it's smaller than these two brushes, but even though you have a slant here, it's not as pronounced, it's a lot more nuanced than the Marc Jacobs and the BK Beauty. BK Beauty definitely has more, and if I put them here from top, you can see that the Jumbo Base, significantly smaller, but it has that nice platform like the BK Beauty and the Marc Jacobs. It also has not as much splay, but because of that, a little more control is a little more precise because when you place this on your skin, it gets very light here towards the top of the brush, right? Whereas with the Jumbo Base, all the bristles stay in contact with the skin pretty well throughout your entire blend. Another brush that reminded me of the Jumbo Face is the Fenty Beauty 110 foundation brush. So this does not have a pronounced slant on one side. This actually is tapered from both sides. And if I were to put this up against Jumbo Base, Jumbo Base is a lot bigger, definitely, than the Fenty Beauty 101. And the Fenty is all synthetic, whereas, again, Jumbo Base is a mixture of natural synthetic. You have a lot more bristle here in the Sonya G brush. And again, you have a more pronounced slant as opposed to the Fenty brush. It's more of like a paddle-like brush because the taper happens on both sides. But if you wanted something a little smaller, we'll go in with the classic 
base. The classic base is Mini Base's Big Sister. Same type of brush, but with a ferrule that is not curved towards the top that is going to allow more movement in the bristles and make it super versatile. Most definitely, if right off the bat you wanted to know which brush from the Fusion series you can use both creams and powder with, it will be this brush. I went in with a little more Huda Beauty Full Filter Stick just so you can see the classic base in action and blending out this texture. I particularly rely on the circular buff motion, if you will, with the classic base to blend out my concealer because just the round ferrule and the domed shape of the brush I feel is so intuitive with that technique. And if you love to blend out in circular motions like this, the finish is going to be airbrushed and just seamless. And again, because the brush is head on your skin, it's not going to feel prickly at all. One of the most plushest feeling brushes. And the bristles move as one. I feel sometimes with a lot of synthetic brushes that are all synthetic, you get a little bit of separation in the flow, in the movement of the brush. The synchronization okay is outstanding and i think that's why the blend is so flawless because of the uniformity when moving the brush across your skin is I'm out of words. I'm out of words. I need the dictionary. Because we're still in the foundation stage of things, I use the classic base to apply the Shiseido Synchro Skin Powder Foundation in Maple. And again, because of the round brush design, I felt this was better suited for powder foundation for the general application of things because I like to whip on my powder foundation to ensure that the powder melts into the skin and there's nothing left behind. It is great for this task. And sure, it is a brush on the smaller side, absolutely. You might have to spend a little more time in getting the whole face quickly, but if you wanted more coverage, after you get the first layer with the classic base, you'll go in with the jumbo base to punch in a little more coverage on smaller portions of your face. But man, classic base is gonna be my go-to for powder foundation. I have a lot other, for instance, I can definitely use face one for powder foundation. Yes, this is flat top, you know what I mean? But there's something about the classic brace. Even though it's a mixture of natural synthetic, again, the movement is so silky on the skin. And on the first round of demos, I applied the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour in Medium 2. And the way this just effortlessly punched the bomb contour into the hollows of my cheekbones. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better experience with this product. I took it straight from the contour pan to my face, punched it on, and in no time, in no time, the bomb contour just blended and the edges were beautifully diffused. I especially like this brush size for cream blush. I follow with the LYS Beauty Cream Blush in Inspire. Again, just went from brush to pan to cheek. And the round shape, I think, just delivers that perfect dose of blush on the cheeks. And again, because it is round, I think it's just so easy to punch on the blush on the apples of the cheeks. And also, if you want to apply it higher, Simply Beautiful just to get it a little higher on the cheekbones. It's not too big, not too small, and that's why I think it's an ideal size for several face shapes and sizes to get the blush on quickly and on perfectly. And just for fun, I also use a classic base to apply Auric in Pyrite. Yes, I said that right. If you wanted to just buy this brush, maybe you wanted to see how it applies highlight, I wouldn't rely on it for pinpoint highlighting right on the center of the cheekbones, but if you want more of a wash of highlight with the product that's meant for that purpose anyway, I think you can get away with that task using the classic base brush. Sure, it's a little big if, again, you wanted to use a product like Lisa's Elevated Glow, but if you wanted to get away with a glow product, not only like the Auric, but like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter to apply that product on the larger portion of the face, classic base is gonna be all right. And I almost forgot, I also used the classic base to apply Pat McGrath's Divine Blush in Divine Rose. Again, because the classic base has such great flow, despite it being, you know, packed, this has a lot of bristle. It has a lot of bristle. But again, despite it being half natural, half synthetic, it moves seamlessly silky on the skin. So again, you want the brush that's going to do powder and cream. 
classic bass. The standout comparison that I thought when dealing with classic bass is BK Beauty's 106 brush. This also is round. You see that the classic bass is a little smaller, but they both have that dome shape. And head on, you can see maybe the classic bass has more bristle in there. I adore the 106 for cream blush. I use this a lot when punching onto my cheeks, but oh my gosh, dare I say, Sonia's brush is a little softer. It is, wow. It's a little softer, but 106 is still very soft. Yes, for sure. This has really nice flow, but I feel that there's something so silky with the classic base that it's really hard to identify. I don't know what it is. Sonia really nailed this blend, but I wanted to show you the BK106 because I thought of this brush when I saw the classic base and used it for the first time round dome shaped brushes again sonia's is a little smaller but that is the standout comparison are there any more let me see you know i think that's it and now on to the brush that started it all the mini base the mini base is a bridge type of brush very versatile concealer or foundation cream blush or sculpting you may already be familiar with it since it is indeed the same as the mini base in the kiyaki set but now with a long handle same as the pro series i went in with the mini base on portions of my skin after i used jumbo base and classic base with the huda stick for portions that you want a little more coverage on and i think the smaller size is ideal for that for instance if you wanted to apply a little more foundation or even concealer around the nose if you wanted to apply concealer under the eyes place a little more coverage around the brows around the mouth the smaller size is a little more precise with those application tasks and also if you have a smaller face and you rather just have a smaller brush then great it's going to be a great match for you i use this to apply mario's soft sculpt stick in medium dark and i thought to take advantage of the smaller size i picked up product straight from the contour stick and then i blended it onto my skin if you want a little more precision from your or application with cream contour or cream bronzer products then mini base is definitely going to be a little more precise than the classic base simply because of the smaller brush head still though with this round dome shape i think it's ideal to work into the hollows of the cheeks i did the same thing with mario's soft pop blush stick in raspberry i took makeup straight from the stick with the mini base and started to blend it onto my cheeks now because it's a little smaller it took me a little more time to blend out the stick it could have been also mario stick because it's a little tacky in terms of the consistency whereas i feel the lys is a little easier to blend out because it's not as tacky it's more of a, a satin matte consistency i got it done i much rather use the classic base for my blush purposes than the mini base but even still, if I was just stuck with the mini base, I can make it happen. You'll get a more precise application for highlighters. So I went in with Lisa's Elevated Glow. I don't remember if it was Solar Light or Cosmic Rose, either of those. And the smaller brush head size, I felt kept the highlighter on my cheekbone region in a precise enough manner that was okay with me and i have demos of using the jumbo concealer or soft concealer brush to get more precise on the very high points of the cheekbones you can definitely rely on one of those brushes but again if this was the only brush you wanted to buy you can apply your foundation. You can definitely apply my concealer, which I did here, right under the eyes. It just buffs it out seamlessly. And although I did use the classic base to apply my concealer, I made it happen. I definitely made it happen because it's a little bigger than mini base. You just have to be ultra careful in getting the brush right onto the inner corner of the eye whereas the mini base a lot easier to do that with since it's smaller you know that's just that's just how it rolls i could use either for concealer but it's definitely more comfortable to rely on the mini base for concealer application and i think also if you prefer to use a slightly bigger brush for concealer blending then maybe mini base will be for you. When we get into jumbo concealer and soft concealer, you'll see that because they're smaller, is more precise application for under eye blending rather than if you love to put on loads of concealer under your eyes, that might take forever if you're gonna use those smaller brushes. But mini base, probably the perfect size 
if you love your concealer, it'll blend out in seconds. Also, if you like a smaller brush, as I mentioned before, for just those portions of your face that need a little more coverage, but you need to get those hard to reach nooks and crannies around the nostrils, around the mouth. If you want it again around the hairline so you don't overwhelm that portion with makeup, even the ears, whether classic base or mini base will be great to get some makeup on there. And down the neck and on your collarbones, if you like to sculpt the neck and the collarbones, mini base, please it just gets right in those lines perfectly the brush that i immediately thought when i used the mini base is the the classic zoeva 110 face shape which is actually lisa's favorite brush for foundation i use this brush all the time for foundation application as well as concealer as well as cream contour bronzer and cream blush they're similar in that they're round but mini base is slightly bigger and from head on you can see that difference in diameter the thickness similar similar in thickness i feel there's a little more flow from mini base i think it's because simply the bristles are longer so you're gonna have a little more movement than you will in the face shape brush. I recommend the Zoeva 110 when I, I think I did my, my inexpensive brush video, my recommendations if you were on a brush budget but you wanted the best of the best. Zoeva, I still think to this day, is one of the best synthetic brushes for cream and liquid products. And the reason I just haven't been using this is the influx of new brushes that I have been receiving and I have been using. But I wanted to present this comparison because I think very close, which leads us to jumbo concealer the jumbo concealer has a flat ferrule but with a lot of thickness and body it is firmer and delivers a heavier coverage in comparison to the soft concealer now unlike the jumbo base the jumbo concealer doesn't have a pronounced slant on one side the slant is equal on both sides so you have a really nice surface area to blend your concealer and i went in with pat's skin fetish concealer in lm12 because it is a smaller brush i don't think ideal if you're drowning your under eye i know so shady with concealer you it will take you forever and especially if you're used to using a beauty blender for your under eye blending maybe this brush will not be ideal i like it for those light concealer days where you just want it to blend out quickly and precisely under the eyes. And again, this brush blend is beyond plush and soft. If you have a sensitive lower lash line, this brush is not going to disrupt your blend. It will not make you tear up. I'm hoping anyway, but just judging by how soft this is, I think you'll be fine. I also think this ideal if you wanted to go on portions of your face that are a lot smaller around the nose, on maybe blemishes you wanted to apply a little more coverage on, if you like to apply any cream product along the size of your nose. I also like this brush to apply cream eye products. So I went in with Danessa's Color Fix in Gingerbread and it's a little big, I think, especially if you have smaller eyes than me to use it for your crease blending. And if your skin moves easily, then this might not be ideal for your eye task because it is a thicker brush. It's not gonna have the same flow as a soft concealer. But if you're okay with that, and you primarily wanted to use this brush for your lids anyway, and the product you happen to be using is a cream one, then I think, you know, you can use that just for that portion of your eye makeup routine and then move on to another brush when you want to use some powders. If you're also one to draw on your contour, a little more precise here, this will get you a nice clean line through the hollows of your cheeks. If you like to go here on the jawline, what have you, if you like to just, you know, go a little wild with your makeup, you'll be fine with this. I also use the Jumbo Concealer to apply highlighter, which I think even more ideal than the mini base simply because it's smaller. You can tap on whether it be your liquid highlighter or your powder highlighter. So I both applied Lisa's Elevated Glow on the cheekbones. It just blends out effortlessly. And I know that is due to the product formulation itself. It helps when the product knows what it's doing from the get. But to have this brush just 
effortlessly blend this liquid highlighter right where I needed it to go on my cheekbones. I couldn't ask for anything more. And I also use this brush to apply Pat's Divine Glow in Golden Nectar. Listen, it just kind of patted it down. It patted it down where I needed to go. Golden Nectar is a beautiful formula. It blends itself. But if I was in a pinch, okay, and I really wanted to apply some powder highlighter and I just had the Jumbo Concealer, I can make it happen. Easy. The brush that I thought of is the classic Fenty Beauty 180 concealer brush. Now, you see that this brush has a more pronounced slant, whereas Sonia's is even on both sides. They're similar in size overall. They both have that pinched ferrule, but I think there's a little more bristle in the Sonia brush. And I used to use this brush a lot for under eye concealer. It's incredible how this feels a little more prickly. It probably is because I have to wash it and the product dried on the bristles. It's just the, the, the Sonia brush is softer. If you can believe that, it's softer. And lastly, we have the Soft Concealer. The Soft Concealer is a baby mini base. It has a round ferrule and more flexibility in comparison to the Jumbo Concealer. Believe it or not, I enjoy the soft concealer a touch bit more than the jumbo concealer. The reason being is because it has a little more flexibility and flow since the bristles are longer in soft concealer than they are in the jumbo concealer brush. I get this painterly-like experience when blending out my concealer. And I also find because of its smaller, rounder size, precisely, it fits beautifully right onto the inner corner, lower inner corner under my eye, which I find is the most discolored on me. And to have a brush that is small enough and it's going to just beautifully blend out my concealer right there. Oh my gosh, incredibly soft. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more from a concealer brush. It's so heavenly under the eyes, does not stab, does not feel prickly. And despite a smaller size, I feel blends out the concealer quite well and, and quickly. But I have been using less and less concealer and I find for the amount that I have been applying, soft concealer is a great match. This can be great for down the size of the nose, on portions of the face you want more coverage on. What I find it to be ideal with is cream product on the eyes. And I went in with Danessa's Color Fix and Gingerbread again. This I feel more of an ideal design for crease blending than the Jumbo Concealer Brush. Jumbo Concealer is great for that lid application, but if you're looking to run a cream product through your crease, the Soft Concealer will have better flow. It will less likely move that skin around and just have a silkier blend when applying those products. Still a little too big for under eye application. I went in with my Katie Jane Hughes brush, which is just a lot smaller as I wanted a more precise application for my lower lash line. But I love Soft Concealer for a cream product on the eyes. I thought it blends out the cream product through my crease quickly. I can also get it on my lid seamlessly. Very easy to do. And the brush that reminded me of Soft Concealer was the 142 from Zoeva, the little concealer brush. Now the Soft Concealer is a little bigger, longer bristles. Here they are from the top. They look to be equal in density, but I used to use the Zoeva all the time for under eye concealer blending because I appreciated its small size, but the soft concealer is softer. It just has an air light wispy quality about it that I love for under eye blending. It takes away the right amount of product, but leaves behind the right amount, okay? So those circles are being taken care of. And it feels good again around smaller areas of your face that you need a little more coverage on. I like to apply a little more here, not to carve out my brows per se, but I find when I'm blending out my foundation, if I happen to have done my brows first and I can't use a bigger brush around my brows, then I could use the smaller brush here on the top to, to get that skin that I fail to cover when using a bigger brush. And also, if you wanted to clean up your shadow and you like to do your eyes first, then soft concealer is great to clean up around the shadow when applying your concealer and all the other tasks that I think are suitable for smaller brushes to cover soft concealer. I might or may have missed some things. I did not write my notes down as I was doing these demos, so hopefully I covered everything. Should you get the whole set or should you get one or two or three? I think you have to ask yourself, 
does your makeup routine call for all five brushes? If it does not, then I think it appropriate for you to choose the brush that you feel is going to fill that hole in your complexion or cheek routine. If you don't have a foundation brush that you absolutely love, then yes, I would consider getting the jumbo base. If you like to go from cream to powder products and you just want to use one brush, then I would recommend the classic base. If you already have a big foundation brush and you needed something smaller, then I would recommend the mini base for those smaller tasks on the cheeks, hollows, and cheekbones. If you you have all the face brushes but you need something smaller for your under eyes either soft concealer or jumbo concealer i like soft concealer a little bit more than jumbo concealer for me that's just for me but i could use jumbo concealer as well it's not like i'm going to completely abandon the brush but this is more for the individual who is just looking to buy one or two if i were to just pick two one for foundation and one for concealer. From how many times I've used these brushes, I would pick classic base and soft concealer. You can cover everything with those two brushes. I mean, each brush is pretty versatile. I don't think jumbo base is as versatile for me in terms of the mediums you can use them with. Jumbo base, I think better for cream and liquids. Classic base, as you saw, you can get away with both cream and powder if you really wanted it to. And I think the size is ideal for several face shapes and sizes. Foundation, contour, bronzer, whether cream or powder, cheek. And with the soft concealer, of course, under the eyes, but also highlighter, which I failed to mention, I my brain. I use soft concealer to apply my elevated glow today. It's a small brush. It's a small brush and I wouldn't use a lot of product, but man, it just keeps the product where you want it to stay on the cheekbones. And you could also use a soft concealer for cream eye products if you dig that. So those would be my two picks out of the whole collection if you just wanted to pick two. If you just wanted to pick one, I'm having a hard time between Jumbo Base and classic base, jumbo base is so unique because it's not like we've seen slants before, but this one is so nuanced that I feel makes it just, <clears throat> and you can still use the jumbo base for cream contour, cream bronzer, and blush, faux show. The only reason why I'm sticking with classic base as the one brush you need to get <laughs> is because I would think it a little more difficult to use the jumbo base for concealer. That's the only thing. Maybe you're like, well, that don't matter for me, Alicia. I use my fingers anyway. Fine, if you don't really care about your concealer task being covered with jumbo base, then yes. If you don't have any foundation brushes at all, if you're looking to retire a beauty blender, go with jumbo base. If, however, if you want something a little more versatile, classic base, we got a smaller face, mini base. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I wanted to quickly mention Wayne's number two, a little bigger than classic base. Classic base has a lot more bristle. Wayne's is all natural. Sonia's is natural synthetic. I still would go with classic base. And I love the number two. The number two surprised me. That's my favorite brush out of Goss's edit collection. Absolutely. This though, I think... Mm. Classic base, what can I say? I hope this video helped in guiding your shopping decisions. I decided to do another one because there were a couple of things I didn't cover in my live. And also if you're not into lives and you prefer edited videos and you still wanted to see the brushes in action, well then, here you go. Let me know what you plan on picking up. If you're skipping this release, maybe you're waiting for a fusion series for the eyes? I don't know. You know I'll be back here if that's the case. I'll see you in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Sonia G brush extravaganza. Monthly favorites or lunchtime chit chat. Take care and I will see you again soon.